Hello. Free Spirit back with you. I think this is another in a series, it seems. Kind of spread out. A series of videos of what's in my bags. Assorted different bags. I did one a long time ago for my tool bag. And then I've done my old backpack. And then I had one about my first aid kit for the trailer, the horse trailer. And this one, I kind of mentioned back then, this is my earthquake preparedness pack. It's like a bug out bag that I keep in my car. And now I only commute one day a week, so it's in there in case of emergency, but I had recently taken it out and forgot about it on my porch for quite a bit, so I started going through it and realized that there's a lot of stuff in here that's no good and a few things I need to replace or replenish. So I'll show you what's here, just for the tinkle. commuted five days a week and was on three different freeways in Southern California. I was a commuter during the Northridge earthquake which absolutely cut us off from the high desert to the valley because the freeway it broke. <laughs> so I had to go all the way around all the mountains and back and so, for a while I just stayed a few days a week at my friend's near to work and then I'd go home on the weekends while they fixed the freeway, while they fixed that overpass. So, this has been part of me and my life since back in those days. And my boss bought this for me. And what it is, backpack. I wouldn't want to have to hike miles and miles, but in a true emergency, you could. It just has shoulder straps. And I'd say it probably weighs about 20, 20 or so pounds. But there are some items that are not in here anymore, such as water. The emergency water pouches that all sort of dried out, disintegrated. Yeah, this pack is probably, oh, let's see, at least 20 years old. So, let's get into it. This outer pouch. Pretty easy access zipper right here. Amazing all the zippers still work. Spending years in a trunk is probably not the best thing. and some things I had put in here. Um, I incorporated some things from the horse trailer at one point. These are quite old. <laughs> Fresh wipes. Supposed to be, you know, wet. Not quite, quite dry and yellow. They smell good. They smell powdery. So I could easily make my own with some paper towels and 
maybe even a little bit of um, the essential oil blend, the, um, um, what do you call it, the On Guard, yeah, so it's kind of disinfectant-y, and we can wet them and then just put it in here and seal this, yeah. to wipe your hands before you start digging through this bag. It's a roll of gauze. Oh no, it's toilet paper. <laughs> toilet paper. Still feels soft. So, you have to take a trip to the woods. You have your wipes and your toilet paper. And then the last thing on this front pouch. There's a little place for a belt. And this has plastic on it. Tarnished. I guess it's bronze or yeah, probably bronze. And wood? I don't know. This must have come separately, but it has a very, very sharp blade. So that's a good thing to have. An emergency kit. Okay. It should be this release here. Well, the mechanism is jammed. It's down here, so release. But I can't push it in. It's kinda kinda rusted or something. Moisture got in there. So I'm gonna have to take care of that. Later. So that's it for the front pouch. Halfway down on the sides. So the first thing it looks like a big pillow, which you could use it as a pillow if you had to spend the night somewhere in your car. First aid kit. It says Earthquake Preparedness Society. This kit's instructions and contents do not take the place of first aid training. For complete training, contact your chapter of the American Red Cross. As you can see, these foil pouches over here, <laughs> they look like pillows too, and they used to be water. Now it's just full of air. Emergency preparedness. In case you need air. <laughs> I have a lot of them. <laughs> but I wanted to show you before I threw them away. So this whole thing can come out, and you can tie it up. 
I guess because you can stuff this with clothes or I'm not sure, but this opens up. Quite a lot of things here. I keep this one in the truck when I am using the truck. Reader's Digest Handbook of First Aid. My family used to get a Reader's Digest, of course. Everybody did back in the day. This is from 1985. Oh, it's not that old. Mm, it has the index here from airway obstruction and appendicitis, artificial respiration, and so on, all the way to swallowed objects, throat something caught in, tick bites, and unconsciousness. There's a big list. something that you should read before you need it, most definitely. It's always good to refresh. But, yeah, we're good. And then we have uh, some gauze pads. Oh, it's a roll. It is six ply, four and a half inches by four yards, eleven point four centimeters by three point seven meters. Sterile, one roll. And this is a triangular bandage for hmm, holding your wrist when you make a sling, keeping your forearm supported, packed with two safety pins made of strong muslin. Band-Aids. 
different sizes. Teeny tiny alcohol prep pads. I'm sure those aren't any good anymore. So like my other first aid kit, needs just to make a note of things that need to be replaced. These I'm sure. Betadine solution, swab aid, antiseptic, bacterial, bactericidal, virucidal, virtually non-stinging, betadine, which is povidone iodine, 10%. Just tear it off, open the edge, and it's like a little pad that unfolds with this rusty orange colored solution on it. I always have a bottle of that in the horse trailer. Those actually feel like they still might be okay. And last is iodine swab iodophore iodophore povidone iodine titratable iodine Saturated swab tip. Saturated swab sticks. Apply locally as needed. Oh, feels very dried out. But I think it's already saturated to some really big like Q tips or ear. Nice to know that in all the years I've had all these emergency kits, really I've had very little use for them. And here is some very sticky fabric tape. Bandaging. It's really not that sticky on the inside, just on the edges. Probably got too hot. Might still be okay for securing things, but should have some good tape as well. And here is some something very stuck. Is it water treatment tabs? Let's see. Yeah, potable aqua. Mm. Emergency drinking water. Germicidal tablets. Yeah, I used these way, way, way back when in the 70s and 80s. Backpacking, you used the little drops in the water because they didn't have such good filtration systems that were lightweight like they do now. So it's always good to have them, but I'm sure these are way out of date. And then there's a couple of tools here instruments, tiny little bandage scissors. And some tweezers. Plastic. Very cheap, but I suppose it could do in a pinch. One good thing about working in the medical field is you can get some of the out of date, unused instruments when the doctor's done with them. It's just like hemostats and and uh, forceps and stuff like that. And this one is an emergency survival blanket. Mylar material evolved from insulation used in space exploration. Reflects back 90% of body heat Compact emergency protection. Size 84 inches long by 52 inches wide. And you wrap yourself up like a mylar balloon. I don't want to break the seal. Keep it dry and untouched until it's needed.
very old stuff in here. Sorry, I'm a little bear. Bacteriostatic surgical lubricant. And these. Bacitracin, neomycin, polymyxin ointment. Topical antibiotic. Expired in September of 91. <laughs> you guys asking about this particular bag. I wouldn't have gotten to this point. Okay, every little chore I get done, it's a bonus. And this last one, we have gauze sponges of all different sizes. And both sides. That's good to have. This is like a really deep wound to pack it. Hope I never need that. Ever, ever, ever. So that's these guys. Just put this back. I think there's too much left because there was so much of these. Some of them still have a little water. Sterilized and purified. Well, at least we know they held their seal. Squeezing if air or water escapes, replace. But it's definitely not enough in here. 4.2 fluid ounces, 125 ml. And there's much less than that. So some of them came through like this. No good. Five days worth for one person. Or, you know, they calculate so many bags per day per person. And this was a one man or two people supply. And then, besides that, I took up the whole bottom cup. There was one more little pouch in here. I have a few items. I'll, I'll take it out so you can see it better. This. Yeah. This. Food pack vanilla flavored, eight delicious or nine delicious high energy, low fat servings. Cause you know, when you're in an emergency, you don't want to eat too many calories. This is gross. It's like cake mix. Ugh, gross. So I could definitely leave this out. It weighs about five pounds. Can't read the ingredients anymore. Wouldn't want to. It's rubbed off. <laughs> oh my goodness. That 
that's yucky. Okay, that was it, so. So this is one item that was in there. 12 sanitary plastic bags. Directions for use on bags. batteries in there and possibly a broken bulb. Bulb, bulb, bulb so this one is going to be given to the trash bin because now all of my headlamps and flashlights are rechargeable yeah. and the last item looks like an antique AM solid state radio operated by 9 volt battery. Hey! Markle. Radio cube. Yeah, I guess this is an emergency radio. Box is sort of melted into itself. There's a Emergency food, emergency water, and a good first aid kit, and maybe, and then emergency blanket, of course, and some uh, light, and that's about it, probably, and maybe a pair of old sneakers to change into, depending on where I am and what I'm wearing, so I could start hiking with this thing on my back, if necessary, so, hope you enjoyed seeing all of these somewhat useless items that will be replaced with more useful items for sure and um, maybe next I will do a what's in my bag show and tell about when I used to do a horse evacuation during emergencies and a whole nother bug out bag for the group that I worked with which was the LA County um, animal control we were the equine response team during uh, fires or 
flooding or all kinds of things. We worked on a couple of hoarder cases where we helped remove animals from the premises and took care of them and helped to get them adopted out. And yeah, that's an interesting story. I could tell you about that and show you what's in that bag if you're interested in that as well. So, for now, that's a wrap. <laughs> I have to put all the stuff in the appropriate places, which much of it is into the trash. And then put it away. I'll keep what I have at least in the car until I can update all of the contents. So, I never worry. I know I'm going to be in the right place at the right time. But, it's good to be aware and have some things you might need. You might need, but you might be able to help someone else with. Anyway. Come back soon, and I will 